Hello manifestors. Let's get started. What's the difference between systems and goals? It's a distinction I first learned from Scott Adams, the cartoonist behind the Dilbert comic. Goals are about the results you want to achieve. Systems are about the processes that lead to those results. The goal in any sport is to finish with the best score, but it would be ridiculous to spend the whole game staring at the scoreboard. The only way to actually win is to get better each day. In the words of three-time Super Bowl winner Bill Walsh, the score takes care of itself. The same is true for other areas of life. If you want better results, then forget about setting goals. Focus on your system instead. What do I mean by this? Are goals completely useless? Of course not. Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. A handful of problems arise when you spend too much time thinking about your goals and not enough time designing your systems. Achieving a goal is only a momentary change. Imagine you have a messy room and you set a goal to clean it. If you summon the energy to tidy up, then you will have a clean room, for now. But if you maintain the same sloppy, pack rat habits that led to a messy room in the first place, soon you'll be looking at a new pile of clutter and hoping for another burst of motivation. You're left chasing the same outcome because you never changed the system behind it. You treated a symptom without addressing the cause. Achieving a goal only changes your life for the moment. That's the counterintuitive thing about improvement. We think we need to change our results, but the results are not the problem. What we really need to change are the systems that cause those results. When you solve problems at the results level, you only solve them temporarily. In order to improve for good, you need to solve problems at the systems level. Fix the inputs and the outputs will fix themselves. Goals restrict your happiness. The implicit assumption behind any goal is this, once I reach my goal, then I'll be happy. The problem with a goals first mentality is that you're continually putting happiness off until the next milestone. I've slipped into this trap so many times I've lost count. For years, happiness was always something for my future self to enjoy. I promised myself that once I gained 20 pounds of muscle or after my business was featured in the New York Times, then I could finally relax. Furthermore, goals create an either-or conflict, either you achieve your goal and are successful or you fail and you are a disappointment. You mentally box yourself into a narrow version of happiness. This is misguided. It is unlikely that your actual path through life will match the exact journey you had in mind when you set out. It makes no sense to restrict your satisfaction to one scenario when there are many paths to success. A system's first mentality provides the antidote. When you fall in, love with the process rather than the product. You don't have to wait to give yourself permission to be happy. You can be satisfied anytime your system is running. And a system can be successful in many different forms, not just the one you first envision. Goals are at odds with long-term progress. Finally, a goal-oriented mindset can create a yo-yo effect. Many runners work hard for months, but as soon as they cross the finish line, they stop training. The race is no longer there to motivate them. When all of your hard work is focused on a particular goal, what is left to push you forward after you achieve it? This is why many people find themselves reverting to their old habits after accomplishing a goal. The purpose of setting goals is to win the game. The purpose of building systems is to continue playing the game. True long-term thinking is goal-less thinking. It's not about any single accomplishment. It is about the cycle of endless refinement and continuous improvement. Ultimately, it is your commitment to the process that will determine your progress. If you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem isn't you. The problem is your system. Bad habits repeat themselves again and again not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong system for change. 
You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Focusing on the overall system, rather than a single goal, is one of the core themes of this book. It is also one of the deeper meanings behind the word atomic. By now, you've probably realized that an atomic habit refers to a tiny change, a marginal gain, a 1% improvement. But atomic habits are not just any old habits, however small. They are little habits that are part of a larger system. Just as atoms are the building blocks of molecules, atomic habits are the building blocks of remarkable results. Hello, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. I covered this book because it helps you to get your life in order without overwhelming yourself. Manifesting and life changes can be hard to do, especially if you're new to it. Taking time to meditate and read can be challenging. So I'm grateful that you're here sharing some of your time with me. And I hope the information provided helps you in a positive way. One thing I had an issue with was cleaning. I just felt overwhelmed. So I started looking at the Marie Kondo method of organizing your belongings getting rid of things that don't bring you joy, including people. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not including people, but just material things that don't bring you joy and you get rid of it. And also making sure everything has a home. This has really helped me. I will link a video in the description box on her method. Now I take Five minutes throughout the day to tidy up one room. I start with the floor. I learned that in nursing school. If you don't clean anything, you clean the floor first. So, um, well, you clean the floor. If you can't clean anything else because something's going on, you make sure that the floor is clean. And then putting things in their place. So when Sunday comes, that's the day I do my deep cleaning. The house is not a total wreck. It's practically already clean. I just need to go over some things. And it probably takes me about 20 to 30 minutes instead of taking two to three hours. I also read one book for 10 minutes a day. I, I switch up my books. I usually go between one and three books a week as far as what I'm reading. And I'll spend 10 minutes a day reading one of those three books. I meditate for five minutes, three times a day. I tried meditating for 15 minutes at one time and it was just overwhelming for me. So when I broke it up in five minutes, three times a day, that's much easier. And I put all this on my phone. Like I have an alarm that goes off and tells me what what it's time for is it time for me to say my prayer i also say three prayers throughout the day from um i also say three prayers throughout the day that's set up on my it's three specific prayers that's set up on my my alarm but i manifest i say manifest affirmations all throughout the day but I have three specific prayers that I say three times a day and um, so making these small changes has allowed me to clear my mind have a clean house and lets me focus on manifesting good things to me I hope this helps someone also the PDF version for this book is in the description box so you're welcome um, until next time Take care. Hello, Super Manifestor. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. We always have free tools in the description box to help you with your manifesting needs. Thank you. Until next time. Goodbye.